Good afternoon. We are going to do another lesson here on the uh, Garfish Educational Channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about the how can I work with positive and negative numbers if I don't have a calculator. I'm going to use the little cheat sheet that was at the beginning of the video. I do want to stress that the second line on that thing is how I feel. Math is almost always easier with a calculator. There is some value to knowing how it works though because that way you kind of got an idea in the back of your mind and when you see the answer on your calculator, if it's you know, really different than what you're expecting, it can give you the idea, hey, wait a minute, I better check this again. Maybe you fat fingered it and hit two buttons instead of just one. But again, this is just kind of as a background kind of thing. How would I do the math if I did not have my calculator? Or if maybe we have a really, really, really inexpensive calculator that day and it doesn't have a negative function. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at these examples. And this little cloud looking thing represents the how would I actually do the calculation and then you know, we, we'll, we'll put the answer and talk about it. Um, as a reminder, we're not doing double signs. If you've not seen any of the other videos, a double sign is something like uh, if this was plus a negative eight, this would be a double sign and that is not what we want. We've already seen, talk, done a video on that. If you're curious to see how do you handle plus a negative eight, uh, you can check that video out on this channel, but we're going to only be looking at subtracting a positive number or adding a positive number. What's going to change is perhaps the number in the front. I'm not going to do any discussion about how to add positive numbers, multiply positive, or divide positives. Those do not change. We will discuss this really quickly though, because unfortunately a lot of times in the elementary level, they say you can't do this. You know, you can't, and they call it takeaway of course, because that's how they kind of start teaching it. But in the real world, once you enter, introduce negative numbers, you can do this. But what you really do in the cloud, in your mind right here, you do 15 minus eight, okay? And that's seven. And then all you got to do is go back and say, okay, which number was the largest? If it's the first number, your answer would have been positive. But since it's the second number, it's a negative. When you're subtracting two positive numbers, if the second number is larger, your answer is negative. And to do the calculation, you just reverse them, 15 minus 8, but you know your answer is negative. All right? Now let's look at these negatives. Okay, I'm going, instead of moving that, I'm going to pretend like I can draw a cloud, okay? So what am I going to do in my mind in the cloud? Well, if I start with negative and subtract, I'm going to continue to move left on the number line. So I'm going to get farther away from zero. If I start at negative 9 and start moving left, what am I going to do? I'm going to be counting negative 10, negative 11, negative 12. It seems like my numbers are growing even though they're getting more and more negative so the value is getting smaller. In size, they're getting bigger. I'm adding. If I start with a negative number and need to subtract, I actually add the two numbers together. Nine plus eight is 17. And since I started negative and went left, it's going to be negative 17. If you subtract from a negative number, you actually add the absolute values together, 9 and 8, and then make the answer negative. That easy. And again, if you, you can go to my actual uh, web page on the Hillcrest Middle School website and see the notes that were at the first of the video. But I did, you know, if you want to go back and you can look at them, take a screenshot or something. But uh, I'm just following those notes, okay? What if I want to add to a negative number? Well, 
in my mental math cloud thing here. Negative 10 plus 4. Okay, I start off negative on the left hand side of 0. Addition is to the right. I'm going to be counting down. If I start at negative 10 and move towards 0, it's 9, 8, 7. And of course, they're negative. So what does that sound like? It sounds like subtraction. When my signs are different, but I'm trying to add, if I'm trying to add to a negative number, I take the absolute values and I subtract them. It's not 10 minus 6, that's the answer. 10 minus 4. Okay, that's the actual calculation I would do in my head. And that's 6. And now I go back and look at the original problem. Which one of these numbers looks largest? Which one has the largest absolute value? The negative 10. So it puts the answer, it's negative 6. Okay? All right, well, what about up here? Another addition problem with a negative. Okay? And same thing. Okay, in my cloud or in the mind, whatever. I take my two absolute values, 9 and 6, and I subtract them. Okay? What do I get? 3. And now I go back to the original problem. Which number looks like it's the largest? Which number has the greatest absolute value? Which one's farthest from 0? The 9. It's positive. My answer's positive. Okay? So that is how you do addition and subtraction when negative numbers is involved. Or if the number that you're subtracting is a bigger positive. Okay? Positive minus a positive when this one is the larger value is a negative answer. Negative minus a positive. Always a negative result. When you're adding to a negative, it depends on which number has the greater value. You subtract the, the absolute values, but the one that looks the biggest, in this case, negative 10, Answer is negative. Up here, positive 9. Answer is positive. All right, multiplication and division, much easier. Much easier. Because they don't change. You just multiply. Here, in the cloud of my mind, I would do 9 times 3. And that's 27. And then, I just go back and check. If I have... One negative sign, one negative and one positive. My answer is automatically going to be negative 27 in this case. It doesn't matter, down here, it doesn't matter if the negative sign is first or second in the multiplication problem. It doesn't matter which number looks the largest. If I have different signs, in my mind, I just multiply the absolute values. 4 times 3 is 12 and one of the signs is negative, it's negative 12. It's that easy. Well, what if I have two negatives? Well, multiplication and division is the same, so I'll do this as a division. Again, whether there's negative numbers are involved or not, it doesn't matter. You divide the absolute values. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And this time, I have two negatives. Both numbers are negative. That means my answer is positive. Remember, the rules don't change for multiplication and division. You just have to see how many negative numbers you have. Also, we're not changing any of the rules for positive numbers. Positive plus a positive. I didn't do it because you know how to do it. Positive times. Positive divided by positive. They don't change. We're not changing math. We're just adding some things to it. And anyway, here's how you can do these problems without a calculator. Again, I was using the uh, little handout that is at the beginning of the video. And like I said, that is actually available if you want it on the Hillcrest Middle School website. You can find my page and it's listed both on my calendar and um, well, actually, it's probably not in the helpful handouts, but it is listed on my calendar if you really want to look at it that badly. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was at least somewhat helpful to you, and we'll see you next time.